friends. I am Dr. Manette Riard, and this is Painting in Your PJs, live with Manette, where I am here bright and early in the morning in my pajamas with hair sticking up, and you can see behind me in the corner over here, cats running around like crazy. It's only 7 o'clock in the morning, and things are already a little wild around here. Welcome to the April edition of Painting in Your PJs Live. This month, I'm going to be focusing a lot on poetry. I love poetry and showing how I use poetry as inspiration for my own visual and art journaling practices. Poetry, good morning Judy, is such a powerful tool for introspection and for helping us look at our lives in a little bit different way. Good morning Tori, good morning everyone. Just my, made myself a nice fresh cup of coffee and the weather has been warm and sunny. I didn't even have to wear my super furry pajamas until tomorrow. And then tomorrow it's going to be in the 20s and snowing again. So welcome to spring in Colorado. And because of that, I've been pretty inspired by the colors of spring, painting a lot of spring colors. So today I'm going to share a fun poem with you and going to paint some abstract flowers in my art journal and painting in your PJs is all about all the different ways we can use art to connect to ourselves and to bring an element of creative play and fun to some of our personal growth. So let me switch my camera here. So I have um, a new journal for a new month. I'm going to be working in a small handmade journal this month. This was one of my favorites that I have made. I've got some paper in there to protect my pages. This was made out of old bingo cards and an old magazine image from an old Saturday evening post. And I saw someone selling these. She had bought a whole bunch of them and uh, selling them on Instagram. And they make great journal covers because they're super thick. So keep your eye out for fun things like that. And then I've just hand stitched some signatures together and made those into the book. It already has a few pages going, but it, I realized that I had made this journal and it's got, this is a real junk journal. It's made out of recycled paper of all kinds. Uh, looks like a paper bag that I cut up, some old stationery and all kinds of things. So it's a different kind of surface to, to paint on than what I've been working on. So I have some mixed media paper and some craft paper here. So it's interesting that my two pages aren't the same on either side of the book, which will make for an interesting spread. I did put some gesso down, especially on this craft paper to make it a little tougher. And I've just got a variety of spring colors. We saw one tiny little iris blooming yesterday when we were walking around downtown Fort Collins. We love trying out new coffee shops and we went and found one that was all about the bower bird. If you don't know what a bower bird is, go check it out there. An amazing bird, I believe in Australia, that make these crazy nests and they're incredible collectors of colorful things and they create these crazy collages and nests of colorful things. So I have a variety of spring colors here to get us started. I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. I got a couple of small brushes. I'm working on a pretty small page. Probably going to want to use my Posca markers as well. Maybe actually try to drink my cup of coffee while it's still hot. And I pulled out for this month's inspiration one of my favorite collections of poetry. It's called Risking Everything, 110 Poems of Love and Re Revelation. This was edited by, or, you know, he was the, the compiled the poems, Roger Housden. And I also have his book, 10 Poems to Change Your Life. He's an uh, amazing, has an amazing ability to pull interesting poems together. And like at the very beginning, I think of the, of the pandemic, when it was Inktober, I really sat with this book and I have drawn all in this book. So I did Inktober Tingles. And so this book is full of illustrations 
And it really allowed me, I loved drawing in my book this way. We're going to do The Journey by Mary Oliver probably tomorrow, one of my favorite poems. And as I drew in this book, it really allowed me to sit with the poems. It inspired me to look at each of the, the poems more than I normally would, more than just reading them. So I would read them over and over as I was doing the different drawing. So I'll be using this book of poems as the inspiration for April, which is National Poetry Month. April is National Poetry Month. So I'm going to use poetry as a form of inspiration and kind of a way in. So sometimes when we're maybe at a little bit of a loss for where to start with our journaling or our painting. Thank you, Tori. I love Zentangle and it was a really fun way to practice and learn a lot of new tangles. So this was from 2019. So I did this one quite a while ago. And as I was flipping through this morning trying to decide where to start, and you can see I have so many poems that I love that I have marked off, I decided to go with this one because I loved the, the words but also the very visual imagery. And the poem is A Place to Sit by Kabir. And Kabir was a 15th century Indian poet and saint. And he writes, don't go outside your house to see flowers. My friend, don't bother with that excursion. Inside your body there are flowers. One flower has a thousand petals. That will do for a place to sit. Sitting there, you will have a glimpse of beauty inside the body and out of it, before gardens and after gardens. A Place to Sit by Kabir. And what I love about this poem, and I did put these words there in the description of this video, but what I loved about this, so much of my own practice and focus lately has been about being more present, feeling a sense of wholeness, being connected to my body. So oftentimes we can be so busy and we live a lot of our times in our heads and learning to come back to the body can be challenging. And I love this idea, especially during winter, of going within, right? So he taught and wrote a lot about meditation and connection with the divine. And so that idea that the flowers are within really struck me this morning. So I thought I would paint some abstract flowers. And then definitely I want to fill this book this month with the, the words or lines from some of these poems as well. So I am going to start with just some simple abstract backgrounds and just have some fun getting some color on the page. I'm going to start with some greens. And I am going to put that off the page there a little bit. Good morning, Blanca. I had the pleasure of teaching my color-coded emotions this weekend again and having Blanca and Judy both come and play with me. So I'm just going to start getting some abstract leafy shapes on the page. I don't have a destination in mind. You know me, I never do. I just know that somehow I'm going to end up with some combination of leaves and flowers here on the page. And always that first step is just getting some color down. These are very loose leaf shapes. I'm working with a fairly large brush here. Bring in maybe a couple of different colors of green here. Just getting those down on my palette up there. It makes me happy even just to uh, see that palette there with all those different shades of green. And I'm working in a much smaller journal this time than I have before. And so these pages are going to go a little bit quicker. My intention is maybe to create some of these videos that aren't uh, quite so long, the intuitive collage. They definitely got a little bit long. Good morning, Julie. Welcome. So glad you're here. Did you have fun buying some supplies this weekend? And I want to just kind of vary the colors of these leaves. You know, when we 
look out at nature and, you know, especially different plants. There's no two shades of green that are the same. No two plants have that exact same shade. So there's a lot of variety in what we see happening. And let's get some of just this maybe really bright color in the background. And as I'm painting, I'm thinking about the words of Kabir, about going inside, sitting inside, and feeling those flowers inside. That I don't have to go anywhere to connect to that beauty, but that garden lives within me. And I absolutely love that. So I've got some simple green down on the page, and I almost stuck my paintbrush in my cup of coffee. Would have been a mistake. And I'm going to hit this with the dryer and get it really dry here for a second. I'd love to hear how's everyone else doing this morning. What are you working on while I get this dry. I love hearing from you. And then I'm going to come back in with some color. I love Blanca is following along. Beautiful. All right. I still have some little places where that paint was really thick, so I'm just going to blot that off a little bit. Oh, we got most of it nice and dry. And I have these sheets of paper tucked behind the pages just to protect the, the pages that are underneath so I don't get all my pages glued together. So let's see, I'm going to come in with some of this deep purple. This is a medium violet from Nova Color. I love this purple. And as I mentioned earlier this weekend, we had the, the pleasure of seeing one little iris in bloom. So maybe I'm going to do something sort of irisy in shape, imagining what that iris might look like and I can come back and give that a stem a little bit later. And what flowers would you paint, right? Like I can't wait. I think it was, it's probably not too, and Julie would know better than me that when the, the lilacs uh, come back and start blooming again, I think that was after I moved here. So it must be later in May. And then I might want to just come in and do some other imaginary blooms on the page. Remembering if I don't like these, they can all get painted over. But the idea is to just imagine that I'm sitting with the flowers within, painting right over the tops of those greens. Love it. Julie, it's her first time painting with us. Welcome. Working on a color wheel for all of your paints and pencils. Beauty, beautiful Judy. Organization makes everything better. The helper stone collage in acrylic. The helper stone. What is the helper stone? I love that idea of a helper stone. And when I think about that poem by Kabir, it's similar to how I think about my art, about that idea of 
finding the images and the visions within, finding that garden within. So I am painting 100% from my imagination here. I'm imagining what I think those flowers might look like. This one got a little bit chunky, right? Each of them is different, but I'm just imagining. I'm letting the, the paintbrush just dance across the page and filling the whole page with just some happy flowers. And that's why these are acrylic abstract flowers. They're not intended to be real flowers. They're intended to just capture the magic and the energy of flowers. So now I'm going to come back in with a lighter purple. This is a brilliant purple by Liquitex. If you don't have several shades of purple, you can darken a purple by adding some blue or even some red to your purple. To lighten it, you could just add some white or even some pink. I also have some fluorescent pink here to bring some pops of light into this. So I'm just going to have some fun just letting these colors mix together on the page. And now you can see why I had to get this page quite dry because if I had not gotten it dry, then mixing that green and purple together, I would have just had a lovely page of mud. And mud was not what I was going for this morning. And when I'm working in my art journal this way, I'm not trying to create something that's beautiful and Instagram worthy, although these most of the time they do get shared just because we're sharing snippets of the videos, but this is my own personal work. This is how I would play even if the video wasn't being recorded. This is still the same way I would play in my journal. Uh, love it. Combination of soul collage and archetype card, the stone. Beautiful. Hi, Ali. Good morning. Good morning, Yvonne. Great to see you all here. So I am working with poetry this month, and I'm going to read the poem one more time, and I'm going to be using this book, Risking Everything, 110 Poems of Love and Re Revelation by Roger Housden. It's a beautiful compilation of all kinds of poems, and you're going to see when I open it, I, a couple of years ago, I have tingled all throughout this book. Oops, and now I have uh, moved away. I took my little bookmark out, but you can see as I'm flipping through all the, I have drawn all over this book. I love to draw in my books. And so this morning we're working with this beautiful poem by Kabir, A Place to Sit. Don't go outside your house to see flowers, my friend. Don't bother with that excursion. Inside your body there are flowers. One flower has a thousand petals. That will do for a place to sit. Sitting there you will have a glimpse of beauty inside the body and out of it. Before gardens and after gardens. And I love this reminder to go within. So much of my own artwork is about that process of going within. And I also loved the visual imagery of the page and found it super, super inspiring. And such a reminder to be present in my body, right? It's so easy to forget that we have a body, especially when we're younger. And then as we get older, that body just reminds us, right? That body reminds us. So I'm just going to start to bring in some little bit of yellow in here. Try to get all the purple out of that brush. Or let me just grab a fresh brush. Purple and yellow will definitely make some brown. 
but it's just feeling like I need some little pops of yellow and maybe we'll bring some little pops of yellow into the center of our flowers and definitely into the cen centers of our sort of little irisy blooms here. Irises to me are one of those magical flowers that look like they've been hand painted when you get up close. They're one of my favorite spring blooms. So I'm just going to continue building up color, building up the page, allowing myself to play, keeping the page simple. What I'm want wanting now is a little bit of maybe contrast in those darks. Um, it's going to want need some white on the page, but maybe some darker green sort of tucked away in the background. And I love this deep, deep green by Nova Color. You'll see it's like super, super dark. But what's going to happen if I come in with some darker greens? Because these sort of color families here are all kind of similar in brightness and tone. And I'm not seeing a lot of contrast on the page. Remember last week we talked about I could take a picture of it and convert that picture to black and white. <clears throat> so I could see that contrast. And already it completely changes the image just by coming in and bringing some of those darks in. Again, I'm working in a junk journal, so I have two different kinds of paper. So it's interesting to see the little bit of craft paper there sort of sneaking around the edges. And in the light of the camera, I know this looks almost black, but it's actually a really, really beautiful dark green there. And maybe I'll even come in and give these leaves a little bit of definition, just a little bit, because we want to keep this abstract and playful. And I'm loving this, uh, the energy of these marks just kind of moving around the page and thinking I want more of that. So I'm going to bring back some of the other colors maybe and add some more of that. As I'm sitting within, where is there a lot of busyness and contrast in my garden? Where is there calm? peaceful places in my garden. So this, this garden feels very much like it's flourishing and in full bloom. And I haven't quite created a place to rest here yet. And I also haven't quite figured out where maybe my words are going to go on the poem. So either I'll make a photocopy of the poem and paste it right onto the page or I might paint out a section to write on the words. George is going to, ouch, stick her claws in me and come say hello this morning. Definitely time to give the kitties a claw trim. Okay, so this is interesting. I'm liking where it's going. It's hard for me to let the little bit of white peek through the page. There's a, the, a part of me that wants to cover over everything, and yet there's also intuitively a sense of lightness that is coming through that's saying, nope, you need to leave that there. So I'm going to come in maybe with some pop of this neon pink and just see what can we get going here. Getting down to the end of that tube. And I'm going to use a pretty small brush for this particular part. And often with acrylic, I have a huge variety of brushes. And I change my brush a lot unless there's just one that I'm super addicted to, which does happen. But the thing about working in an art journal is I do like to work very dry and not have a lot of water 
in my brushes. And so it can be hard to get a brush dry. It can be hard when I'm working with some of these darker colors to get those colors uh, out of the brush. Oops, and I'm getting a green all mixed in that one. Got my pink too close to my green on my palette. So just by bringing in this little bit of pink, I'm starting to give a little more shape and dimension to these flowers. So I didn't draw these flowers ahead of time. I just started layering color and just creating that illusion of petals. Georgia, it's hard to see over the top of you. So you can see she's trying to sit as close on my peeper as she can get here, silly girl. She loves to be part of the action. Although we had some new friends over for dinner on Friday and they have a one-year-old who was adorable. Been a long time since we got to spend time around a baby and he was so precious, but the cats didn't think too much of him. Yeah, Georgia, you're not helping. So again, just letting those colors build, it adds a little light and brightness to the page. Definitely needs some white and definitely needs maybe a few more pops of green. And I'm thinking these irises need some stems to make them feel a little bit more anchored on the page. But it's so easy how we can just use color and the shape of a paintbrush to start to build up shapes. And iris have those beautiful long leaves. So we can give the illusion of some of those longer leaves. Now my other cat is down here going, can I get in your lap too? And nope, I do not have room for two cats in my lap. Kind of loving those long, maybe a little bit sort of grassier looking stalks. So maybe we'll just put a few more of those longer shapes in there. And this one feels like it needs a little bit taller back on it there. And I'm almost wanting a few more pops of that yellow, but I think I'm going to have to come in with some white and put the white down and then put the yellow back over that again so that that yellow will really pop on there. So I always think of irises as having those tall bits on them. So this one just felt like it needed a little bit of a taller bit that feels a little more abstract irisy. And I love painting abstract flowers. And especially these round ones in this way are super, super fun to paint. Okay, I'm going to get this nice and dry, and then I'm going to come back in with some white to kind of finish it off and then maybe look at a place that I may be not loving as much that I might want to put a place to put the poem in there, or I might look at the poem again and decide you know, do I want to just have lines from the poem or do I want to have the whole poem? It's a nice short poem, so I could fit the whole poem.
All right, I think we got it mostly dry. I'm going to come in again and just blot that up a bit to get any chunky bits off. I really want that white to stand out on the page. Did a pretty good job. Okay, let's get some acrylic white down on my palette here. And this was a giant jar of the Nova acrylic, and I have just put it into a mustard jar to make it a little bit easier to use. And again, I'm going to come in with a small brush, and I really love a good angled brush. This one's getting a little frayed now, but you can get really nice with your acrylics, really nice fine lines with these tiny angled brushes, so they're a great brush to have in your arsenal. And I'm going to come in and maybe just imagine that there's some nice light shining on my spring flowers. And I don't need lots and lots of white, but already it kind of changes the look. And as soon as I put all that white on there, I want to go back and add more color again. So maybe that's more white than I want. We'll see. These are kind of hidden at the bottom, so they need maybe just a little bit of a touch of light. And I'm also noticing that I kind of want one more flower over here, or maybe this is where the palm is going to go. Like there's a gap here, and I have this even number of flowers when you're working creatively. And even in this abstract way with composition, you want to think in odd numbers. Odd numbers are always more visually appealing to the eye. And then I want to come in, and I'm just going to put some white down in here because I want to, and maybe that's what's going to happen over here, I want to bring in some of the yellow flowers as well. This one's kind of peeking behind, but maybe get a couple of brighter ones happening, maybe over on the edge of this page over here. But if I tried to just put the yellow down, yellows are always very transparent. It's hard to get a really opaque yellow unless you get a nice cadmium yellow. And I know some people are not crazy about using the cad yellows. And I'm wanting to maybe bring out just a few of those little leafy shapes. So mixing that white with just a little bit of my green here. Maybe want to bring back some of my other greens as well. And this is the way that I love to just paint, is just to work intuitively on the page, creating this bright, bright, happy page. I'm going to let that white dry for just a minute and come back with a little bit of this limey green. What's this one? Brilliant yellow green. It feels like a spring green, like the green of trees that are just bursting out. I always love that yellowy green color they get. And there's not a lot of green here yet, but I went for a beautiful walk yesterday and the grass is definitely greening up and some of our favorite birds are coming back. I saw a beautiful spotted towhee singing his little heart out looking for a mate yesterday and a flycatcher in the park. And I had shared on Facebook that we went for a walk. I can't remember if I shared it, no, because it was after, I think it was Thursday afternoon. Maybe it was Wednesday, I don't remember, but we went for a walk at a local state park we hadn't visited before. 
and there were 15, maybe more bald eagles, immature and adult. And uh, in the United States, I've never seen that many clustered together. I've seen that in British Columbia and uh, have seen literally like hundreds of them all at once. And I still have that childhood sense of delight of, you know, this is an extinct, almost extinct bird, even though they're not anymore. But that childhood delight in seeing a bald eagle and to see that many all clustered together in one place is truly, truly magical. All right, get this brush nice and dry. How's everybody doing? Everybody having fun painting and working away over there? The other thing I think that I love about this poem is that it does use that analogy of the garden within. And Brad and I went to a new coffee shop yesterday, and they had an old copy of The Secret Garden, one of my favorite books, as you guys know, and uh, that I had never seen. It was a an illustrated version with a lot of um, like really big print and fun illustrations, and it was a copy of I hadn't seen before. It was really beautiful. All right, so this page is continuing to feel brighter and happier as I go along. We saw them at uh, Boyd State Park, Julie. They were all clustered around the marina area, and we had never walked at the state park before. And um, we've been seeing them everywhere. Like, they've been flying over our house quite a bit lately. There's definitely a couple that live here in the area near Lake Loveland. So we've seen a pair of them quite frequently. But to see that many of them all at once was pretty spectacular. And I don't know if they were just passing through. And this is that place of just play, connecting to that inner garden. What does that inner garden look like, feel like? Bringing in maybe a little bit different shape of flower here. Growing in my garden. And it's not hard to create a really simple... It was a nice find on the book. If I had my phone, I'd show a picture. I'll probably I'll share it on uh, Instagram. Um, it was such a, a beautiful copy. But yeah, I definitely recommend. So it was just the end of last week. So I would imagine they would still be there, Julie. It was definitely unexpected. And Brad found this great app called eBird. And uh, you can use it to check what's been seen in a particular area lately as well. And he's been starting to, to keep a bird list of what we're seeing here. He came home from a walk yesterday all excited about all kinds of ducks that he saw. That's a lot of what we've been seeing lately are different kinds of ducks. Definitely wanting a little just bit more of those pops of pink to kind of brighten up those flowers. And these guys need a little something to create some definition. And I'm wondering what I could add to do that. And I almost want to bring in a spot of orange, but I also am pretty happy with the color palette. But maybe if I mix a little bit of that neon pink with a little bit of my yellow, it won't feel like I'm introducing a whole new color. This is when learning to mix your own colors is really powerful because then they feel like they belong in the painting. They don't feel like all of a sudden you've introduced something completely new and different. 
So come in and just get a little pop to give those a little dimension. And again, because those are the same colors I've already been using, they feel like they belong on the page. If I'd added another, like just a pure orange, I might have gotten something that was just a little too different and would have been jarring on the page. But this is just going to give that little bit of family. All right, now it feels like a happy inner garden really coming together, creating just this joyful, abstract, wild inner garden, the place that I can visit as needed. And I want to make this yellow pop out just a tiny bit more in the center of these. And again, sometimes it just takes a little effort to build up those yellows. Or if you just mix your yellow with a little bit of white to just create a little more opacity, you can see that just makes that yellow pop out in the, the center of those flowers. And I get into these pages and think, oh, I'm going to sit down and this is going to be really fast and quick and uh, how fun it'll be to just do something fast. And then I get so caught up in the painting that I don't want to stop. But I also want to be mindful of not over painting a page just because I'm having fun. Not over painting a page just because I'm having fun, which can be easy to do. So remembering to recognize when you need to stop and take a break and this feels like a wonderfully beautiful full very simple abstract floral garden that is a gorgeous explanation of that poem by Kabir and what I'm thinking is that I'm gonna because I love the garden and I don't want to cover any of this up I'm going to make a photocopy on my copier real quick and show you how I would attach the poem and just create it so that I can still see the gardens of my page. So bear with me for one quick second while I make a super fast photocopy. I love having a photocopier at home. All right. Oh, that page makes me happy. I think that's one I'm going to... Uh, thank you for that. I love that. Thank you, Tori. And I opened up the printer and found this. So can you tell I'm a little obsessed with these colors at the moment? So this was a... Uh, Brad and I were working on my website and there was a blog post about the lotus symbolism and we thought oh we should get people on our email list so I went down a fun rabbit hole so this is a hand-drawn sacred circle except for the circles themselves and a tangled and colored lotus and this is now a free downloadable coloring page at manette.teachable.com but that was hilarious when I pulled it out of the scanner and notice that it had uh, exactly the same color palette. So apparently this is the, the color palette of choice. And I have printed out a copy of my poem. And I am just going to trim that out of here. And I may even leave that little flower design on there. And even though right now I, you know, remember what inspired this page and which poem inspired the page, I don't want to forget, right? I don't want to forget. I don't know. It's feeling like it's going to sit over here but I don't want it to sit permanently, so I am going to attach it to the edge of the page 
with some washi tape and I'm going to use just the, the washi tape that's sitting on my desk and it doesn't quite match anything but the nice thing about washi tape is that I could change my mind later. I could also have glued this to um, a tag to make it a little bit more permanent. And my paint is still wet, so I'm trying not to get uh, smear the, the flowers too much. And there wasn't a lot of margin on the page at the edge of that poem, so I'm just going to literally stick that right on the edge of the page. Flip that over, maybe. Quit being fussy. Me and washi tape don't always get along. And actually the stripes are kind of fun on there. They provide a little bit of nice contrast and there's nothing yet on this page. So that can just become part of that design a little bit later. And uh, you can see that I got some paint on there because I was being impatient and not letting the paint dry, but no problem. If I can find my baby wipes I can just clean that up baby wipes are your best friend in the studio and mine seem to have disappeared at the moment so that's going to get cleaned up a little bit later I could also just come in and I am gonna stick this underneath and I could just wipe that out a little bit and I'm okay with it being messy, and I'm actually thinking, well, I've already got this lavender on here, and I still have a lot on my palette over here. So maybe I'll just add a little wash. And this is plain copier paper, so it's not super sturdy. And I could just add a little wash of lavender. I could even take a little white and clean that up. And also I have an inexpensive, you know, or I mean it's a nice, but I just have an inkjet, not a laser printer, so definitely the ink is not always permanent on there. Again, I can come in and just blot this up a little bit, get some of those little extra bits of color. And I may get super fussy later and decide I'm going to let this dry completely and print a new copy of the poem to go on there to, to have that finished piece be make me a little bit happier, but we'll see. Um, I try so hard not to be a perfectionist and sometimes it just rears its ugly head. <clears throat> but there we have our first page honoring National Poetry Month with a beautiful poem by, a place, uh, by Kabir, A Place to Sit. Kabir is a 15th century Indian poet and saint whose work I really, really love. And uh, this was translated by Robert Bly, who's just an amazing translator, one of my favorite translators as well. So absolutely super happy with this page and this reminder, this mindful reminder to sit in our inner gardens and to see what grows there. So thank you so much everyone for joining me as always for painting in your PJs with Minette. I will be back tomorrow with a new poem. I think we're going to do The Journey by Mary Oliver and uh, some new creative inspiration for play. So thank you all so much. Have a beautiful rest of your day. I look forward to gathering with you all soon.